Hey friends, I hope everybody out there is having a blessed day. God is so good. Check it out. We're back for a new video. We're going to look at Psalm 141 today. So let's get into some prayer. We'll jump into some scripture and then what I have to share with you. By the way, if you're new here, my name is Rex. I'm so glad to have you here on this channel. Um, Jesus Christ has provided me with a wonderful life after decades of darkness and addiction. Amen. That's the fuel for this channel. Let's jump into some prayer. Father God, we just want to come before you today, Lord, with appreciation in our hearts, Father God, and seeking to, to grow as believers, seeking to mature as followers and workers within your kingdom. We ask that this video today, Lord, be something that we drink in on every level, Lord, that we, that we allow ourselves to be inundated with your goodness and with your resolve and with your wisdom, Lord. We also want to ask that this video, Lord, be able to reach anyone out there not yet at the foot of the cross, that it be able to speak to anyone out there who is perhaps backslidden from their place at the foot of the cross, Lord, that it all could have a chance to come to true repentance and, and experience the glory and the, and, the, and, the, and the breadth and the depth of rebirth and what that entails, Lord. We also want to pray a hedge of protection around the lives of and a blood covering over the hearts and over the minds of children and the infirm and anyone unable to do so for themselves, Lord. Help us to always be driven to use that gift of intercession, that gift of prayer, Father God, to lift up what's going on in our own lives and, and, and to lift up that your will be done and that we should be able to, to walk in the ways that you would provide for us, but also, Lord, that we would use our voice to be able to lift up the 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 the, the lost and and the and the confused and the hurt and the addicted and the 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 people out there struggling with the whole scope of what the flesh can do when it is left in control instead of being subjugated by the spirit and by your holy word and by the Holy Spirit, Lord. We pray all of this in the holy, righteous, glorious, and eternal name of your Son and our Savior. Lord Jesus, in your holy and heavenly name we pray. Amen, guys. Let's get into Psalm 141. So, Psalm 141, Prayer for Safekeeping from Wickedness, a Psalm of David. Verse 1. Lord, I cry out to you. Make haste to me. Give ear to my voice when I cry out to you. Let my prayer be set before you as incense. The lifting up of my hands is the evening sacrifice. Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Oh, let me just say hallelujah to that. You know, it's very easy to let this get the better of us. It's very easy to let this little rudder right there steered the whole ship any which way at once. Verse 4. Do not incline my heart to any evil thing to practice wicked works with men who work iniquity, and do not let me eat of their delicacies. Let the righteous strike me, it shall be a kindness, and let him rebuke me, it shall be as excellent oil. Let my head not refuse it, for still my prayer is against the deeds of the wicked." Their judges are overthrown by the sides of the cliff, and they hear my words, for they are sweet. Our bones are scattered at the mouth of the grave as when one plows and breaks up the earth. There's such beautiful imagery in those two verses right there. Definitely something that's wonderful to contemplate on in your own personal prayer time. Verse 8. But my eyes are upon you, O God the Lord, in you... I take refuge. Do not leave my soul destitute. Keep me from the snares they have laid for me and from the traps of the workers of iniquity. Let the wicked fall into their own nets while I escape safely. All right, friends. So, first off, thank you guys for letting me share with you. Welcome. You just heard Psalm 141. So now's when we do what the show's title says and go walking in the Word. Here we have our second in a run of four Davidic laments, and an over in an even bigger picture run of eight Davidic psalms. The takeaway here, the grand takeaway here, presents true religion as a fellowship shared with God that can weather all adversity. 
such a, a union seeks out the godly correction that deepens that relationship, that improves it, that strengthens it, that provides it with a bedrock and foundation, right? And, and it flies in the face of worldly desire, of fleshiness. It flies in the face of the superficial pull of compromise, of comfort, of the material. Okay? Let's look now at verses 1 and 2. Lord, I cry out to you. Make haste to me. Give ear to my voice when I cry out to you. Let my prayer be set before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. So, this is a simile that is rooted in ancient Israel's sacrificial worship. And, and this was in other cultures too, but we're going to focus on Israel here. Burning of incense was a regular part of Israel's worship. Within the tabernacle, the cloud of incense was used as symbolic of the theophanic cloud through which God's presence was revealed or made manifest. Also, the cloud is representative of prayers as both rise upward to God. Let's look at verse 3. Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. So what we have here is, is humility on display as our author, David, foresees the temptation to speak unwisely and, and he's proactive here. He's preempting the attack by seeking the side or by seeking the aid of God in deterring such um, loose mouth foolishness. You know, sometimes it doesn't even necessarily have to be what we say that that, that, that particular thing is foolish. When, when, when we're just making words to make words, when it just sounds for the sake of sounds, that's foolishness in its own. Let's look now at verse 4. Do not incline my heart to any evil thing to practice wicked works with men who work iniquity, and do not let me eat of their delicacies. All right, man, that last line really speaks to me as a, um, as a recovering addict, you know. There's a very... There's a very real sense in the world that, you know, oh, it's just a taste. Oh, I just did it once. Oh, you know, I just, I didn't participate. I just looked or, you know, I didn't, I didn't go. I just heard, you know. And um, any evil thing here, that phrasing, it looks to any compromise that's being made. As an addict, I assure you that most don't just sell their soul outright. Most aren't Robert Johnson down there at the, uh, at, at the crossroads selling his soul to learn how to play guitar, right? Instead, and I can attest to this, it's a series, a, a, a damnable series of parting out our standards one piece at a time until just like that proverbial frog in the skillet, we are boiled alive and we've just sat there for it. Let's look at verse 5. Let the righteous strike me, it shall be a kindness, and let him rebuke me. It shall be as excellent oil. Let my head not refuse it. You know, um, man, people love to laugh at us Christians, don't they? I, I don't know about you guys, but if you watch very much Christian content, you look through the comments. I have to say, one of my favorites, because it's so dismissive and ridiculous, is the, uh, the Sky Daddy comment. I can't count the times I've seen them. Um, but uh, the wise takes and appreciates correction. It receives correction. But the fool remains steadfast at the detriment of their very own soul. At the cost of, of ultimate and eternal destruction, right? So when we, when we have people like that who speak to us in that way, you know, obviously we can try to, you know, meet them with the love of the gospel, but at a certain point you've also just got to be able to accept that, that when you're walking this path with God, everyone who isn't has the potential to be someone 
who, who, who just wants to see your downfall. They just want to mock you. They just want to mix you up in the mire. And so we have to have a discerning spirit, right? Because we're also told not to cast our pearls before swine. So, um, you know, when, when we're treated like that, you just have to wear that as a badge of pride. You know, like they say, haters are going to hate, right? Let's look now at verses 8 through 10. It's the last one I have to share with you guys today. But my eyes are upon you, O God the Lord, and you I take refuge. Do not leave my soul destitute. Keep me from the stairs they have laid for me and from the traps of the workers of iniquity. Let the wicked fall into their own nets while I escape safely. He said, look, I'm not going to put up nets for you as my enemies, but this is what I ask God. Those nets, those snares, those plots, those schemes that they purpose for me, let them experience them. Let them have a taste of what it is that they wish to deliver upon others. So we close on prayer for deliverance from the wicked. And verse 9 showcases this in a way very similar to Psalm 140, verses 4 and 5, via the use of powerful hunting imagery. Let's go ahead and look back real quick. Last thing, we're going to look back to Psalm 140, verses 4 and 5 from uh, our last video there. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from violent men who have purpose to make my steps stumble. The proud have hidden a snare for me and cords. They have spread a net by the wayside. They have set traps for me. Powerful imagery that very much depicts the, the, the desire for the wicked to pull everyone else in them. You know, we have the saying, obviously, misery loves company. And, and there's no more miserable group than those who do the bidding of the enemy. I love you guys. Thank you for letting me share with you all again. Um, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Share it if you loved it. Um, hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. You'll find out every time I got a new video. Seven shorts, three long videos a week for a total of ten on the channel. Guys, I love you. Um, comments, questions, video ideas, suggestions down here in the comment section. Prayer requests down here in the comment section. Your witness, your testimony, brothers, sisters, I want to hear it. Share it with me. Share it out there, but make sure you're sharing it. Drop that down in the comment section if you want. Uh, I love you. Father God loves you guys even more. Whatever you're going to do, man, just get out there. Be active. Lift up fellow believers. Pray for the lost. Keep your face down and, 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 your, and your eyeballs in the scriptures. Keep growing every day. That's why it's a walk of faith. We didn't just... You, you don't just come to the foot of the cross and then boom, you arrive as the as the perfect specimen of a Christian, right? It, it's this forward movement of growing every day, every moment, seeking to bring our character more and more in line with the character of Christ that the Holy Spirit so lovingly reminds us of as we are indwelt with the with the very um the the the, the very spirit of God that brought about the birth of Jesus Christ that brought about the formation of, of all that we look at. You know, it talks about the Holy Spirit in the book of Genesis, and when it talks about him moving upon the face of the deep, the actual Hebrew word there is akin to the word that we would use for brooding, describing a bird that is setting on its nest, on its egg, uh, uh, providing this warmth and this this comfort and this protection, bringing about this great creation, right? That's the spirit that indwells us. You, as a born-again believer, if you are, that's the spirit that indwells you. Since that day at Pentecost, we are indwelt by the very spirit of God. What a blessing. What a, 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 what a gift, right? I love you all. I'll check you out in the next video. Whatever you're going to do, like I said, get out there and get it for God.